I gotta say, I've played a lot of online only shooters and I've never seen one so unique. The game we're talking about today is of course the Mean Greens. Now as usual, let's jump into the settings menu real quick before we get into the game. There are four different customizable windows under the options button. Those being gameplay, graphics, key bindings, and sound. First things first, let's look at the gameplay. You have your sensitivity settings, which normally I find myself turning down instantly when I jump into a shooter like this, but oddly enough, it was already at a really good sensitivity. For me, 6 is more than okay, and the game also comes with this option for force feedback which I can only assume is some sort of mouse acceleration, but it's off from the get-go, which is very nice of them to do. Other than that, you can invert the y-axis, show objectives, and show chat, which are defaulted to on, and I've not changed. This is an odd thing about the in-game chat though, it seems to be in the middle of the screen, which is very weird and not normally where you'd imagine the game chat to be, but not a huge deal. Moving on, graphics. First setting is of course your screen setting. You have full screen, windowed, and borderless, which is nice to have. Your resolution, I'm playing at 1080p, and as for the rest of the settings, they're defaulted to match my card, so I'm running the game at best settings and all the way to the bottom we can change our gamma, which is pretty standard. Now is there anything missing here? Well, I'm gonna say it, there's no FOV slider, but for a game like this, the FOV is really fantastic, and I don't really see a true need for one. However, an FOV slider is never a bad thing to have. Other than that, the game comes with everything it needs. It's a very pretty game, but not graphically demanding, so I'm not gonna dock it for not having tessellation or anything like that and I think it's a pretty fair settings menu. Key bindings are pretty much standard. This game is on Xbox and PlayStation, so that's why it seems like there isn't a whole lot going on here. I've said before that when a game comes to all platforms, it kind of gets a little dumbed down. Otherwise, I could see this game being full of different keys to use. Regardless, you can change any of these to your liking, which I did. Left Alt was Roll, so I changed that to Q. I don't know how on earth people could actually use Left Alt while they're running, but hey, maybe I'm the weird one. They also just had an update last week that added controller support. And lastly, your sound. You have master volume, music, sound effects, and VoIP. Which I could say is all you need for a game like this, and really it does fine, but I guess there could be more sliders. For things like footsteps, which in this case is just under sound effects. Now there is a bug here. I normally have my sound effects at about half, but for some reason it always defaults itself back to almost off so I can't hear myself fire, and I can't hear enemy fire, so I have to go back mid-match and change my settings, which is a bit annoying, but I imagine wouldn't be that hard to fix. Now that we've seen that, let's get into a game. There are three different options to play a game. You can click play now, and the game will assign you a server. You can create your own and make your own lobby, or you can click party and play with people whom you've added before. So let's just jump into the game, and from there, I'll list the pros and cons to the game. It really is amazing to think that of all the shooters we have, just the smallest things can make them really good or absolutely terrible. This game has some really good aiming and firing, and the gunplay makes you want more, which is necessary for a game like this. Otherwise, what's the point? So the game is all third person, so you will be shooting from the hip, but you can also zoom in on your targets, and really the guns are so accurate that it doesn't really make you wish it was first person especially with the character models being so well designed. Now that I've touched the gunplay, I'd like to talk about how that fits into the game itself. You know those games like Call of Duty or Battlefield where you select a type of gunner that you're going to be before you spawn, and then you can choose to be which one you want to be after you die. Well in this game, you are every character from the get-go, and really this makes things a lot faster. Not only can I jump right back into the game, but also I can select any weapon mid-game, which is really cool, especially in levels where you're going to be doing a lot of long distance killing as well as short range killing, and I just really love that idea. Now there are some overpowered weapons like the rocket launcher, so if I just choose the rocket launcher at any time, how does the game stop me from being overpowered? Well, as you use overpowered weapons, they have a cooldown, so the sniper lets you go through one reload and then you run out of ammo for a few minutes. Same with your grenade and your rocket launcher, and they all have different quantities of ammo in which you can use before they're out of ammo, and you have to wait to reload them. And I think if you're going to give people weapons this powerful from the start, this is the best way they could have possibly done this. 
This is very well set up, and I tip my hat to this. So let's go over the weapons you have real quick. The first is an assault rifle, which is a spray and pray weapon. However, this is very accurate and feels really nice to fire. Of course, from long range, it won't do you very well. So the next weapon you have is a sniper. Now, of course, this does exactly what you'd expect. Two body shots and you're dead or one headshot. The sniper is very accurate and doesn't have any annoying breathing animation. So you aim, nothing will throw you off. Thirdly, you have your shotgun, which reaches quite far, but of course is a close quarters weapon. Then you have the rocket launcher, which is a one-shot kill if you hit your target or does some amazing without being unfair splash damage. And lastly, you have the flamethrower, which as soon as I saw that, I knew it had to be a part of the game, but wondered how much I'd use it. And surprisingly, it does enough damage to warrant itself a great close quarters weapon, as well as giving a fantastic death animation. Which I gotta say, when it comes to the death animations, there are few, but they're really well done. Now I know this is a very small thing, but I really gotta say that the color palette and overall look of the game, in general, is very aesthetically pleasing. The textures are also very nice. I'm playing at 1080p max settings, but this game is just beautiful. I imagine they were going for a colorful look because of what the game is based around. Each level is the design of some sort of child's room, so in that respect, you wouldn't be surprised to see such vibrant colors associated with the game. And it's done this very well. I said before that the character models were beautiful, and what is really neat about them is how you can kill them. If you shoot them with your gun, little chunks spill out of the army men. If you blow them up, you can see the inner parts of the army men's body that have no paint on it, and that's really cool because if you take real army men apart, you'll see the very same thing. The plastic they use is not the same green or tan that is painted over him. And I think this level of detail is quite nice, but my favorite is using the flamethrower to melt your opponent. If you look at him, he will not only look like he's melting, but he will have burn spots, and you'll also be able to see the plastic underneath the paint yet again. And as I said, that level of detail is great, so well done on that. However, that's not the biggest pro when it comes to the level design. When I first played this game, I played it with my brother on the largest map, and even though it was a one-on-one -on -one match, I never felt as though I was sitting around doing nothing. Even though the map was large, there was a continuous battle between he and I, and that speaks very loudly about how well done their level design is, and I don't think I would ever have an issue playing this game one-on-one, -on -one because regardless of the map size, I feel enough will still be going on. Now how does that affect a large lobby? If it felt full with just two of us, how crowded does it feel with 10 of us? Honestly, I have no idea how the developers did it, but it feels very similar. I have yet to be in a lobby that felt too big for my liking. And really, this is again just showing how well the levels are designed. Now as I said, I'm playing the game at 1080p on max settings, and I'm playing the game at almost a steady 144 frames per second, so I can easily see myself playing this game at 4K, no issues. Now of course, this is a very small game as of right now, so you'd expect a good frame rate, but that doesn't always happen. I've seen games that don't even look as good and are just as small, if not smaller, that run worse. So it looks like they have a pretty good team on this design-wise. As for the internet connection, I have no issues playing games online. I never get any latency issues, at least not yet, and the only thing that does happen, if not almost too frequently, is in the lobby I will be disconnected from the host, which does suck, but I imagine this is a way of trying to ensure that you don't lose connection in the game. However, if this does start to happen in the game, that can prove to be a tad annoying. As of right now, there are 10 maps. Now I don't know if I've stated before, but this game is a multiplayer only game, so these 10 levels might get a little repetitive depending on how much you play. However, when I first started playing the game, I went through the maps and I was shocked at how fresh and unique each one felt. No map is like any other in the slightest, and they are all full of different dangers besides your opponents, such as the bathtub level. If you fall into the water, you'll sink, and the train level. If you fall off, you'll die. And all these levels are really cool. However, I do have my issues with them. The last pro on this list is simply, the game updates frequently, which is very nice, being as how there's a lot of things that I feel needs to change before I can give this game a perfect pass. Don't get me wrong, I'm addicted to this game, and I love playing it, but every game has its cons, and some of these are pretty substantial, so let's get into them.
One of the things that really bothers me about this game is the fact that you cannot play with bots of any sort. This is an online person to person multiplayer shooter and there is no 1v bot system implemented. I have no idea what their plans are for this game, but the addition of bots with difficulty settings would be great. I could see this game moving forward in that aspect. What I mean by this is a lot of games will give you the option to add hard bots or easy bots or something in between. But for some reason I could easily see this game letting you pick more than one difficulty. Coming across hard bots and medium bots in your server to simulate real players with different skills. I think it's because of the way they set up their classes, where you're all the classes in one and you can switch guns at any time to be a different class. I just feel as though these developers are forward thinkers and something like this would be something that they'd come up with. But back to the review. It kind of sucks not being able to play with bots, especially when you're doing a 1v1 match or just can't find anybody online to play with, which is another hassle. It seems really difficult to join a random lobby. Now I have done it, it's possible, but for some reason it either doesn't like to connect to a random server or nobody's playing. I feel like an easy remedy for this would be to just do a server list like most other online only shooter games. That way we could pick a server we wish to join based on the amount of people who occupy it, but as of right now, join game is all we have. Speaking of multiplayer lobbies, you can't customize your lobby. Each map has a set game mode, so if you wanted to just do a deathmatch on the train level, too bad. If you wanted to do a capture the flag on the city level, too bad. And if you wanted to do a king of the hill in the Play-Doh map, again, too darn bad. I feel like all these maps were designed so well and could easily give up multiple game modes, but for some reason, each level is locked with its own personal game mode. Now don't get me wrong, the game modes are very fun, but it does leave me wishing and really hoping that one day, not only are there more levels, but I can change the game type for each level. Another thing that irks me is that I cannot change the wait times. When I start a lobby, I have to wait 25 seconds for my friends or online randoms to join the lobby. Then, I have to wait 10 seconds for the game to start after everyone has readied up. And then, after the level has loaded, I have to wait another 10 seconds for the match to start. Why? I could easily see if it was a connection thing, but that's a lot of seconds just to start a match. And certain game modes make you wait to respawn, which can be really annoying if you get spawn killed, which of course can happen. The way they design their levels, they try to make that difficult, however, it can still happen. Regardless, I feel this is a setting that I should be able to mess with. And it's really annoying that I can't adjust some of these simpler things in a lobby that I made. Now earlier I praised the level design and the graphics, and really all of it is very nice, but there's something missing and even though it's a small thing, it goes a long way. So each level is vastly representative of a child made play area. Now I don't know about you, but as a kid, I wrecked everything I built, and the fact that everything on the map is glued down is kinda sad. Even the little safety cones are immovable. And it's little stuff like these items having some sort of physics to them that can really bring a level to life and add some serious immersion to the game. Now it is small, but I keep wondering why these things aren't flying around as I blow them up. It really would add that extra level to the game, and I really do hope that it's implemented down the road. In all, you may wonder how I feel about this game. To be honest, I really love playing the main greens, and I really loved all the advanced thought that went into it. The level design, the color palette, they really tried as hard as possible to stay true to an army men childhood, and I commend that greatly. But I can't look at this game and look at it as a finished product. If they left the game as it is now, it would still be a great game, but I just feel like there's a lot missing that could potentially make this game a bestseller bar none. This is some of the most fun that I've had with an online only shooter game, and the price is really good as well. I see so much potential for this game. It's so well made and hopefully the developers aren't done yet because this could easily be one of my favorite games of 2016. This game again was the Mean Greens. It sells for $9.99 US dollars or your regional equivalent and I fully recommend it. Thanks guys.